There's two different methodologies available for detection of Zika virus, uh, PCR, which is detection of viral RNA, and then uh, serology, which is a blood test for detection of antibodies to Zika virus. And um, choosing between the two methodologies is really dependent on the duration of symptoms and then the specimen source or specimen sample that's collected. So for PCR, um, really it's most useful in the early acute stages of disease. After this time point and in uh, asymptomatic pregnant women, uh, serology is really the preferred method of choice uh, to be used. So um, serology, so antibody detection, um, really shows us that you've been exposed to the virus. And for pregnant women, uh, a, a positive serologic result to Zika virus would prompt your healthcare provider to monitor your pregnancy more, more closely. Um, there's no targeted antiviral agents against Zika virus, so there's no treatment that can be offered. Uh, but because we know that Zika virus is linked to birth defects, um, your healthcare provider will, will just monitor pregnant women specifically much more closely. The test that we're currently offering is the IgM antibody capture ELISA or MAC ELISA that the CDC has used and has developed um, for, for Zika virus testing. And this is also the assay that's received emergency use authorization through the FDA. Um, this assay is specific for detection of IgM class antibodies to Zika virus, which are formed fairly early on and detectable about five to seven days after symptom onset. It's important to remember that the, this is still a screening test and any positive should really be considered as a presumptive positive and confirmed through the CDC. Uh, and the reason for this is that false positive results can occur in patients that have been infected with a virus that's closely related to Zika virus, uh, for example, dengue virus. Um, also, uh, because we're relying on an immune response to Zika virus, a negative result by this assay should not be used to rule out infection. Um, and in patients with less than five days of symptoms, uh, in particular, they should be tested by a PCR assay specific for Zika virus. For providers considering Zika virus infection, they should also consider evaluating patients for um, other viruses that are co-circulating in the region, uh, including dengue virus and chikungunya virus. So these three, Zika, dengue, and chikungunya, they're all transmitted by the same 80 species mosquito, and they, um, the symptoms that patients present with oftentimes overlap. Um, and are not easily distinguishable on a clinical level. Um, so testing for all three viruses is, is recommended. Um, also, providers should consider other endemic infections uh, in those regions, such as leptospirosis and malaria. We were very lucky to have um, clients and providers we were able to collaborate, collaborate with to evaluate the, these tests. Um, a number of uh, clients from Latin America and South America, specifically Colombia and Brazil, provided us with uh, samples from patients with suspected Zika virus infection, and we were able to use these samples to evaluate the clinical um, performance characteristics of our, of our assays. And without those collaborations, we would not be able to uh, offer the assays we are currently offering for Zika testing. We do realize that diagnostic testing for uh, Zika virus can be a challenge, um, and we have um, uh, professionals and, and experts available for kind of guiding you through the uh, diagnostic testing algorithm, which, te which patients should be tested, how they should be tested, and um, how they should potentially be monitored. Um, so um, that expertise is available through med Mayo Medical Laboratories.